Well, I brought my old girl into the shop today. I noticed that I had a front wheel cylinder that was leaking. And uh, that left front brake needed some attention. So what I have decided to do is uh, instead of fixing these old drum brakes, I rebuilt these brakes when I was about 16 years old. There's still lots of lining left on them. Actually, I don't even think I was 16. Probably about 14. But anyways, I've got uh, all the parts I need here sitting for to uh, install disc brakes on that straight axle. So, And I've got a new fuel pump, electric fuel pump. And some other goodies to put in there just to, to bring the old deer up to date. So, anyways, that's what we're going to be working on here. Anyways, looks like these uh, these brake drums are haunted. They've got uh, a whole whack of spider webs in them and brake fluid dripping all over the place. And, but, uh, yeah brakes don't have a lot of miles on them for the number of years they've been on there. I think I was about 14 when I did those front brakes. So that was a lot of years ago. Anyways, better get back to work here. I get to use my brand new breaker bar that I bought on sale. Break these these bolts loose here, I hope. Yeah. It's funny how when you've got better tools than you did when you were 14 years old, things go easier. For now, for whatever reason, I just feel really strong with that bar. Let me grab a rat. Such a flurry, tools are flying everywhere. I'm really amazed that that's coming off as easy as it is. I'll bet you if I got the air ratchet, it would come off even faster. Let's go one step further. A few drops of oil, air, air tool oil, and the Air ratchet. Hell yeah. Well, now my nuts are stuck in the socket. Come on. There we go. I wasn't going to use that, as a matter of fact, I can't reuse the old, the old uh, rubber brake line, so I, rather than fighting with it, I just took it off. Now, I'm probably going to have to beat this off with a hammer. Hang on. The real question is, how big of a hammer do you think I need to beat off? Ah, looks like this one's going to do it. <laughs> piece of cake. It's like working on a brand new truck. Oh my dear. It's barfed brake fluid all over Hell's half acre here. Inside there. 
Anyways, that's one. I'm going to go do the other side. Well, that's got both sides stripped down now. And uh, that didn't take very long. Now it's time to start putting it back together. But I'll start that maybe tomorrow. I think it's Miller time. Well, I've done a little bit of cleanup on that and wiped some grease off and reclaimed a couple of castle nuts that I'm probably going to have to reuse. And it's time to open some of the presents. And I'm going to start with this is the magic piece that makes this uh, disc brake conversion uh, possible. It's a special bracket for to uh, bolt the disc brake calipers to the the 53 spindles. I just figure out how to open it here. We'll see what's inside. And it has, uh, it comes actually with its own new, new castle nuts, so I won't have to reuse those other ones. Okay, here's the magic parts. It bolts onto the spindle, and it holds the new caliper. It's pretty heavy duty. Looks like a quality piece of uh, machine work. Very nice. Well, this part of the procedure seems kind of pointless, but uh, what, I had to, what I had to do is relocate the grease fitting from here over here, drill the hole and tap it, and put the grease fitting back in. Now I drilled right in till I hit the king pin because it's hardened and the drill stopped at that point. Now that the, that uh, grease fitting is in that position, I can't get it to take any grease. So I might as well have just not even bothered. But um, the way I see it now, if I have to, if I really want to grease these king pins, I will have to take the new disc brake bracket off or loosen it and move it out of the way so I can get the uh, put a grease fitting back in there and put the grease in there and then take the grease fitting back out and I don't know why they didn't make provisions on that uh, new bracket to accommodate the grease fitting being there because the bottom one all I had to do with it is uh, put a 90 degree fitting on it and it clears the bracket fine but anyways, we'll just carry on and go do the other side now. Just a bit of a slow pain in the ass, but has to be done. Well, that's got this grease fitting relocated on this side, and there's a plug that uh, set screw that goes into the original hole. And that should uh, allow this this bracket to clear now. Now this goes on that way
that. Now we will torque these grade 8 bolts to spec. Set at 78 foot pounds. <sighs> Takes quite a pull. It's a little bit awkward in here. But... Yeah, I'll open up some more boxes of goodies here. Just go at it. Rotors are actually for, uh, um, I believe, 73 to 93 Ford F100s and F150s. And what we'll do is, uh, what we're doing is we adapt these to run on that uh, 53 straight axle. Apparently I have to change out the bearing racing in these with the one that's supplied with the new bearing, so oh, I'm not really looking forward to that, but yeah, it probably won't be too bad. We'll get after that shortly. Well, we just did a test fit on the calipers to make sure that everything clears and everything's going to be uh, fitting okay. And... Uh, Got the bearings repacked, ready to put the seals in. And uh, as soon as we get those seals in, we'll be able to take those calipers back off and start firing parts at it. And uh, I'm using this vintage wheel bearing lubricant that has been in my family most of my life. Um, Eventually we'll run out, I guess, but uh, I think I've got uh, wheel bearing grease for life here. But it works. Works as good, if not better, than any of the new stuff, so I'll just keep using it. Anyways, let's get those seals in. Okay, we need a tally whacker to tap that into place. Or maybe we'll just use a hammer. Hammers are good. See, that's got that one in. And yeah, now the next one. We'll wipe this braking surface down with uh, some brake clean to get that, that uh, protective oil film off it that uh, they, put, they put on it to protect them while they're being shipping, shipping wherever. And 
the tether side. to those threads and see a little sticky going on there. Hell yeah. Ooh. I sure don't give you very much of this Molly brake lube. Talk about skimpy. But we don't need very much of it. Matter of fact, if I went and looked in my inventory, I've probably got something there that's just as good. give you just enough to do the job and that's all you get. Well, all that's left to do now is install the new brake lines to it and do some brake bleeding and put the wheels back on and we should be able to get our woad when we want to. So there you have it. Not too bad of a job to do. Just pretty straightforward. By the way, those are uh, Ford F-150 rotors and those are GM calipers that are on there for a Chevy pickup so those of you that always argue Ford's better than Chevy or Chevy's better than Ford and Dodge's suck or whatever 
you know what, when it comes right down to it, they're really all just made out of the same stuff. But anyway, what's important now is that whenever I stomp on the throttle and turn that beast loose, I'll be able to get it stopped when I want to. Anyways, till later, over and out.